hello this is another video of carter code and in this video i'm going to show you how to connect your flutter application to your restful api this is a pre-written code and if you want the source code you can check in the description below in these applications users can create an account and also log in using the same credentials this is my endpoint written in node.js and before you run your endpoint, you must make sure that you have MongoDB Compass installed locally or you can connect remotely. So if you don't have MongoDB Compass installed on your PC, you can check online for guidance on how to set it up on your computer. And this endpoint has four routes. The home route, the get all route, the account route and the login route. I have created a schema which you can see here that represents the collection of my data in the database. Before we can connect to our endpoint, we need to create a model. Let's go back to our Flutter application. I've already created this model but I'll show you how to generate it. To generate your model, you must first retrieve all data from the database using your endpoint. When we access the get route, you can see that we retrieve all information from the database. So we copy our Chrome browser, instead of us writing the code, we are going to generate the flag ourselves. So you place your response from the endpoint and name it user model. Once you click on generate, this website will generate your models for you. So we are copying this code. Let's go back to our Flutter application. Inside the model, you paste the code we copy. Once you paste it, you have all these blue underlines, but you have to make sure that you remove all of them. There is one more thing that we have to do. If we are not only fetching data from a database, we are also going to post. So we have so in order to so in order to generate our post model, we must first post a new user into our database and copy the response to generate our user post model. So, so when we post new user, this is the response that we get. So now let's copy this response and go back to the same site and generate the post model. User post model. So let's copy now let's copy the code and go back to our flutter application and create a new dat file user post model and paste the code we copy in so we are repeating the same process we did for the previous one by removing by making sure that we get rid of all the blue lines now that we create our model let's create our controller I've already created a controller. These are default packages in Flutter except the ATT. This is the model, and you can see that we also import our model that we created. You can see we have a user model, and here you can see that we have um, a post model. This HTTP package must install, and to install it, you must go to your popspec.yam files and install this package else you will be able to access your endpoint let's change here too let's change here too to user post model so let's see how we connect these two applications together let's click on sign up that file you can see that we created our text editing controllers 
who is going to handle all the input we made through our text files. Now let's initialize our user controller. So now we can access everything from our controller through the variable that we created here. This is a text field controller for the email. And we have another text field controller for the phone. Another text field controller for the password. So let's move straight to our create accounts button. And inside the button, we have the onPress function. We are going to use async and await function. Await dot user controller. Now you can see that all the functions that we have inside our user controller is suggesting to us. So we are selecting create account function. And when we select the create account, we can see that it has given us all the parameters that we created inside our model. So we can pass our text full values to these parameters. If the, if the account is successful, we will receive response from our endpoint and the response are going to be stored in this variable that we are creating here. If response dot missing is equal to so what's the response what's the response that we had from our endpoint let's quickly go there and check to make sure that we do the right thing and inside our endpoint the return missing is account created successful so we are copying this and paste it here So I create a dialog box. So anytime the account is created successful, a dialog box will pop out telling the user that your account is being created successful. Fail to create, else fail to create account. So let's run our code to see what is working perfectly. So I'm clearing all the previous data I've already stored inside my database so that I can see the code working. So let's try to create a new user. So once the account is created successful, a dialog box should pop up telling us that account created successful. Wow, bravo, it works. Account created successful. So let's check inside our database to see whether we have the user data stored in it. Let's try to add another user. Oh, that one to work. It means that our code is running perfectly. Uh, now that we are able to create an account, let's try to log in using the same credentials. Let's go to our login screen. Now we are in our login screen. Um, okay. okay, here. Okay, inside the elevator button, we are going to write our login function there. So let's go and initialize our controller first before we can create our login function. We are going to use async and await function. So now we type await user controller dot login now you see that it has given us all the parameters 
that we have in this login functions so we are going to pass our values from our text input controllers to these parameters uh, if the response dot missing is equal to um, let's go to our endpoint and make sure that we copy the right message yeah, so let's copy the login successful and paste it here so if our login is successful um, the application is going to take us to a welcome screen else the application will print login fail There is something that I forgot. Let me go back here. Um, copy the show alert dialog box and paste it here. If the login is successful, the application is going to take us to welcome screen. And if um, we are not able to log in, the application will pop up login field. So let's try to log in. We have our user credentials here. So we are copying this phone number and the password is XE. 1 to 6. So we paste our phone number here and the password is ex123456. Uh oh, we had error. Uh, the problem I face here is that I didn't pass my values to the controller, and because I'm using params, I must pass them. So now we should be able to log in EX123456. Oh, we have login fail. What's happening? Is it the password that we type wrong or the phone number? Wow, I think it's the password. It's supposed to be XE123456. Wow, bravo, it has worked. This is how you connect your Flutter application to your RESTful API. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the video for more amazing content. Thank you.